Hello, my name is Mark Lanyardo. I'm a consultant urologist and I work both in London and in Windsor. I specialize in prostate disease and I'm one of the few urologists who do both focal therapy of HIFU and robotic prostatectomy. I am possibly the only urologist in England and maybe in Europe who does rectus sparing prostatectomy and focal therapy by HIFU. And that's important because focal therapy by HIFU is a, an attempt to treat cancer giving very few symptoms. And the rectus sparing prostatectomy is a way of removing the prostate also, again, with very few side effects, um, but treating the cancer effectively and making sure a man is as hopefully as good as he was beforehand. So in that way, I can offer a unique perspective on the treatment of men with, with prostate cancer. Now, the ideal man who would be suitable for focal therapy would be a man who has um, a cancer in one part of the prostate that is of medium aggressiveness and with no evidence of spread anywhere else. That man could have his prostate treated easily by focal therapy in most circumstances. However, another man might not be so suitable if he has significant cancer on both sides of the prostate. Now, there are some men who have cancers that are suitable for both focal therapy and by surgery. So how do you decide what's the best treatment for him? And that can be quite a difficult decision sometimes, but it does put men in a very powerful position because you have a good choice. So when I talk to patients about which option they should choose, I'd like to know about you know, what is your preference? Is your, is your priority on trying to be as free of the cancer as possible? Or is your priority on maximizing uh, the chance of having a good life after with as few side effects as possible? And when I decide about treatment, I, I consider those things. So, so if a man has, um, uh, for example, uh, a desire to be as free of the cancer as possible, then usually I'd recommend he have surgery because the premise is what you take out cannot come back. It's pretty basic, but it's true. However, there is always a risk perhaps of getting some side effects. And so if a man really is willing to trade off some perhaps um, certainty of cure, for example, because what you remove cannot come back, and is willing to accept a small risk that he might need additional treatment, then um, I would offer focal therapy of high food. Now, as it turns out, focal therapy is often actually extremely effective, providing you pick the right patients. So you need to be sure that the cancer is in just one part of the prostate and that you don't have unknowingly another cancer perhaps on the other side of the prostate that hasn't been identified. For that reason, it's really important that you have a good multiparametric MRI scan when you, to make the diagnosis. And further, you then need good biopsies. Now, now, it's not always possible to get good MRI scans and the quality of the MRIs vary significantly around the country. But that's absolutely imperative when it comes to making a decision about what sort of treatment you might be suitable for. If the quality of the MRI or the biopsies is not entirely perfect, you might be better off having a treatment for the whole prostate, such as a prostatectomy. And again, to minimize this chance of side effects and maximize the chance of cure, my opinion is that a rectus sparing prostatectomy is the best surgical approach to removing the prostate. My experience is that patients are dry almost immediately after the surgery in almost or well, most cases, and that more men get better erections after that than the traditional way of removing the prostate that is from the front. The reason that the reason the erectus sparing prostatectomy is effective is because you go behind the bladder rather than in front of the bladder. Intuitively, if you think about it, if, if as a surgeon you have to go in front of the bladder and release its attachments and the attachments to the urethra, it's more likely not to work quite as well after the operation. So with the rectus bone prostatectomy, you leave the bladder in, in its place. You don't affect those attachments. And so bladder control is often much faster. Furthermore, it's easier to preserve the nerves and the blood vessels that give men erections because you see them right at the beginning of the surgery. And so it's much easier to protect them and to, and to guard them from damage. So what would I recommend in general to patients? Well, if you're, you know, if you're a man who's 65, um, you, you've got good erections or reasonably good erections and, and you value a good sex life with your partner, then all things being equal, generally speaking, I'd recommend focal therapy with high food. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is when you treat just one part of the prostate, the other side of your prostate, where there are nerves and blood vessels that give you an erection, are completely unaffected. 
Now, because they're untouched by any treatment, it means that they work as well as they did before the procedure. On the other treated side, they probably will be slightly affected, but not nearly as much as affected as if they'd had, for example, or if you'd had, for example, radiotherapy or surgery. So generally speaking, all things being equal, I think focal therapy is the right treatment to have. Now, if it turns out that focal therapy by high fruit is not possible, for example, because you have more significant disease on both sides of the prostate, or the cancer is not in a good area to be treated by focal therapy, then if you have to choose the type of surgery you want, I'd recommend a retsis-bearing prostatectomy. That technique preserves all those structures needed for bladder control much better than the standard approach from the front. And furthermore, you're much less likely to affect the nerves and blood vessels for erections. Now you can make that operation even better still. You can do a frozen section at the time of the surgery. So a frozen section means analyzing the prostate during the operation itself. So usually as a surgeon, when I have to do this operation, I have to make a judgment about trying to preserve the nerves for erections or not preserving the erections to be rid of the cancer. You, often you can't tell in advance or even during the operation whether the, the nerves are involved or not, whether it's safe or not to preserve the nerves. So you have to make a guess or a judgment and we're human. So sometimes we, we, we make the right decisions, but sometimes we don't. And some, so we remove the nerves when we didn't have to, and sometimes we keep the nerves when there's cancer in them. And that's a really frustrating position to be in as a surgeon. And more importantly, for you or, for, or whoever as a patient. So how can we make that better? Well, recently we've been able to do frozen sections during the surgery. That means that the prostate is analyzed in real time by a pathologist who checks the edges of the prostate to look for cancer there. So as a surgeon, as I know that I can get the result during the operation itself, I can preserve the nerves on both sides of the prostate. And it's only if the pathologist tells me that actually there's cancer on the edge that I then remove more tissue. That means I know that by having Neurosafe, I can intentionally save the nerves on both sides without risking or reducing the risk, at least of having positive margins or leaving cancer behind. What's more, to make it a better or nicer recovery for the patient, for the man who's having the operation, I choose to use what's called a suprapubic cat tube or suprapubic catheter rather than a catheter in the penis or urethral catheter. So the suprapubic tube goes through a small incision just in the lower abdomen rather than um, a tube going through the penis. And that's much more comfortable when it comes to recovering after the operation. You can imagine it's better to have a tube there than one dangling from the penis. It also makes a difference in other ways. It means that we can check whether you can pass urine earlier after the surgery, uh, because all we have to do is open and close the valve on the catheter. Whereas if you have a catheter from the penis to check if you can pee, it means taking the catheter out. And then if you can't pee or have a problem, you have to put it back in again, which is a major palaver. Whereas with the supratubic tube, you just flip the valve open or close as needed. So that's, those are the enhancements, if you like, you can do to the surgery to make the outcomes better. That certainly is my experience. You know, so in summary, what I usually, what, what I recommend to patients is that if you're suitable for focal therapy, have it, you've got 100% chance of being continent and, uh, and you know, most of the time you will preserve the erections or maybe you'll need some tablets to help with erections if needed. If you're not suitable for focal therapy, I strongly recommend you have a rectus sparing prostatectomy with Neurosafe to be sure that preserving the nerves is, is, is safe and then have a super poo tube rather than the urethral catheter to make it a much more comfortable recovery. I can tell you that, um, that I know that um, after radical prostatectomy, uh, since I've switched to using the rectus bearing technique, not a single person has needed to have an artificial sphincter or tape inserted. And I've done 400 of these procedures that way. Before that, there would be a small percentage of men who would need perhaps a tape or some other, or, or an artificial sphincter for incontinence, but it was a small proportion of men. Uh, the rectus bearing technique is much better for bladder control. And if you're a, if you're, if you're a man, say, as I said earlier, age, maybe in the early 50s um, and have normal erections and you're suitable for nerve sparing uh, prostatectomy, um, and if I, again, using the, the neurosafe technique with rectus sparing, almost all men will, will 
uh, well, most men will, many men will be able to get erections, possibly with the aid of medications if needed as well. I've done uh, between 350 and possibly 400 rectus bearing prostatectomies now. Almost all the patients are dry. 95% um, of people are dry, not needing a pad. A small proportion of men will still wear a liner or a pad in their underwear because they leak periodically. But no man has needed a radical operation or any other surgery to become dry following this procedure so far. So the rectus bone prostatectomy is certainly in my experience a much better way, much kinder way of doing the operation than the traditional way of doing the surgery. When it comes to deciding about treatment, you have to think about, you know, what's your chance of dying from this disease? I'm, I'm sorry to put it so crudely, but you know, really, you know, over the next five to 10 years, what, you know, Am I likely to die from this or not? You know, because most of the time we look at uh, the treatment and the outcomes from treatment, about somewhere between 20 and 30 men need to have a treatment for one extra man to be alive. That means of 20 to 30 men who have the treatment, only one of them might actually benefit. So 29 of the other 30 won't necessarily be alive. And yet they're going to be exposed to the side effects or potential side effects of the treatment they choose. So to me, you know, if your chance of dying is not that high over five to 10 years, why would you expose yourself to the risk of urinary incontinence, you know, which can significantly affect your life? And if your erection is important to you, why would you take you know, a larger chance of losing your erections than you need to? And that's where vocal therapy by HIFU or whatever technology you want to choose, I think really has a place because we know that these treatments have, you know, reasonable chance of, you know, or certainly a good chance of uh, stopping the, the disease from progressing. Yet they have almost no impacts on, on bladder control. Your bladder control is just the same as it, as it was before, as it is after treatment. And also in, in the vast majority of cases, erections um, are either unchanged or they may need a bit of support, but they're usually still there. You know, and, it, and you compare that to side effects of surgery certainly surgery done the traditional way where you have a you know, substantial chance of urinary incontinence and an even greater chance of losing your erections you know uh, you know why why would you choose an option like that when there is another alternative available